Oh, hi again, everyone. This is John Strebler, editor of JSIO, or John Strebler's Investment Outlet, a weekly newsletter that focuses on the precious metals and the stock market, based on my 46 years of experiences as described in uh, last week's video. Today, we're gonna talk more about investing in gold and silver. Um, several months ago, I determined that the precious metals, led by gold, we're moving higher uh, within a bull market. In a bull market, prices go up and down from day to day, and they may even drop for weeks at a time. But the long-term trend, the primary tendency is toward higher prices over a period of many months or even many years. We'll look at how I decided gold and silver were in primary bull markets another time, but tonight we're gonna look at different ways that you can benefit from this bull market in those metals and uh, consider which options might make the most sense for each of you. Well, gold is the clear leader of the pack when it comes to the precious metals. Uh, it benefits from many thousands of years of being used as money for exchanging goods and services and for storing wealth. That's because of its beauty, its rarity, um, how it's almost uh, corrosion free, and because it's so easy to work with for jewelry and, and making other uh, works of art. And gold has historically been the most important part of royal treasuries um, for thousands of years, for kings and princes and emperors, from pre-Roman times all the way up until the early 1970s when the U.S. closed the, the gold window. But gold still is a part of um, most nations' monetary reserves, and it's still seen by many as the only true money. As a result, most savvy investors around the world own at least some gold, while those in places where the government uh, isn't very stable or the currency isn't very stable, they tend to own quite a bit of it. Uh, when and if all the stuff hits the fan, uh, wherever you live around the world, you don't want to be stuck with a bag of the local currency um, that would probably be worthless at the time. You want gold readily accepted anywhere in the world, readily convertible into goods and services of whatever country um, you are at the time and place. <clears throat> As a result, whenever uncertainty levels rise around the world from wars, from pandemics, from inflation, from shaky governments, people's demands for gold rises and its price rises along with uh, that demand. Silver is kind of like gold's uh, little brother. It has a lot of the same characteristics but different just the same. It's not as pretty as gold, it's not as rare, it's not as easy uh, to, uh, for resisting corrosion, uh, and it's not a significant part, significant part of banks, um, central, central banks reserves these days. Historically, silver was widely used for everyday transactions, buying and selling things, and a part of royal treasuries and so forth. Uh, being much cheaper in price, it was also used for the manufacture of all kinds of things from buttons to jewelry to tableware and so forth. Uh, in the modern world, silver's u biggest use is for electronics and for other uh, electrical manufacturing purposes. Well, because of these factors and more, silver these days tends to be more of an inflation hedge than gold is. Uh, to be very simple about it, if future inflation, which means a rise in the overall uh, price level, if inflation's your main concern, then silver's probably the place to be. But if you're worried about things like war or financial chaos or governments collapsing and so forth, then you want to be in gold. Well, to be clear, gold is also a great inflation hedge, it's just that it has so much more going for it. Um, so in the case of a, an economic depression, for example, with lower prices, we might expect silver to drop quite a bit, but gold would probably hold its own, maybe even go up in price. Uh, so gold does more than just give you a hedge against inflation. I see and hear about all kinds of different complicated ways to own gold and silver, but you know, I'm a kind of see, keep it uh, simple guy. So unless you're talking about hundreds of million dollars worth of investments, in which case you don't even need my help, uh, the best bet is probably just a mix of uh, physical bars, uh, bullion coins, and exchange-rated funds, or ETFs. Um, if you want to have, uh, well, you do want to have, sorry, if you do want to have physical bars, kilo or 100-ounce bars of gold, 
uh, in silver bars, 100 ounce or 1,000 ounces of uh, silver. They should be minted and marked by major refineries such as, such as Johnson Mathe or Engelhard or the British Royal Mint and held in a bank safe deposit box or else in an immobile uh, fireproof safe of your own. A smaller chunk of your holdings um, should also be in bullion coins and or in the case of silver, uh, silver rounds from a reputable, reputable mint. Bullion coins are defined as coins that sell primarily based on the value of the gold and silver they contain with little or no numismatic or rarity value. Good examples of gold bullion coins include the U.S. Uh, golden eagles, Canadian maple leaves, South African Krugerrands, and Australian kangaroos. Uh, you can pay more for things like proof coins or the most recent year minted, but none of that matters much in the long run, so just keep it simple and buy uncirculated or BU coins. You're going to typically pay a few percent above the value of the gold in the coin when buying, and you will lose uh, probably all, maybe a little bit more when you sell. Uh, that's how the coin sellers make a living, and well, fair is fair after all. <clears throat> Rounds, silver rounds are simply one ounce of pure silver that look like coins, but they're produced by private companies rather than government mints. While rounds sell from uh, uh, all kinds of different mints for about the same amount, it's a good idea to just buy from one well-known mint. Uh, that way when you go to sell later on, buyers uh, will be more willing to give you a good price on those. <clears throat> for the most part, it's too expensive uh, and too cumbersome to buy and sell bullion bars and uh, coins and rounds back and forth on a regular basis. That's why exchange traded funds or ETFs such as GLD and SLV or in the case of platinum, PLAT are so handy. One share of GLD represents a tenth of an ounce of gold. One share of SLV represents an ounce of silver. You buy and sell them just like any stock, which these days means you're probably not gonna pay any commission. Just call your broker, go online, or use your mobile app. Buy or sell in a matter of a few seconds or minutes. <clears throat> You'll notice that uh, those ETFs, the price on them is a little bit different than the price for physical gold and silver. Uh, that's due to their management fees and some other factors. But unless you're dealing in gargantuan amounts of metals, the price they charge for buying and holding your gold and silver are reasonable, and they're just a great way to benefit from higher metals prices. Uh, I'm going to shut this thing off for a second, the teleprompter, and show you a chart. I, I realize it's a little hard to see, but we're going to try to get the studio effects uh, improved over time. Here's a chart showing gold, physical gold, in the blue line, and GLD, it's ETF, in the green line. Well, you probably can't tell much difference if you can tell any difference at all. And that's because they move neck and neck together. This is over a time period of 10 years. So over that 10 years, uh, actual gold was up 140%. Excuse me. Yeah, actual gold up uh, 152%. And GLD was up 140%. So you gave up 12% for all of those years of uh, owning GLD and for the convenience and so forth. But you, you got basically um, the vast majority of the benefit. So let's start this over again, the teleprompter. Um, you can buy those, GLD and SLV, you can buy those in your IRAs also. Now, if there's a downside to GLD and SLV is that maybe they're too easy to buy and sell. Uh, a lot of times people freak out when the metals tumble, such as they did uh, a week and a half ago. And so they sell their GLD and SN, LC, SLV, even though they hold on to their uh, bullion coins and things in the safe, because those are such a house to deal with. Well, gold and silver eventually come up in price, uh, but bam, you sold your ETFs, and uh, you got, so you got faked out. So a good suggestion then is to hold your serious long-term gold and silver in bullion and coins and rounds where you won't be tempted, tempted out of them. And, and to top things off or for shorter term movements, that's where GLD and SLV really, really come in. The final uh, way that we'll look at here for investing in gold and silver is buying shares of companies that mine and sell those metals. 
The advantage of buying mining shares is that they are leveraged. That means they go up and down faster than the metals themselves. The reason is easy to understand. If we use an example of uh, XYZ company, that mines gold, let's say they have a cost of uh, getting it out of the ground of $1,000 an ounce. If gold's selling for $1,200 an ounce, then they made a $200 an ounce profit. So if gold goes from 1200 to 1500 now their profit goes from $200 an ounce to $500 an ounce. That's a 150% increase in profit, even though the price of gold only went up 25%. So that's the general rule. Gold and silver mining shares will go up and down quite a bit more than the actual metals themselves. Uh, once again, I'm going to show you a chart to illustrate, and I'm going to stop the teleprompter. So in green, we have the price of GDX over two years. GDX is an ETF that invests in gold and silver mining shares, and you buy it just like any other stock or ETF. Over the last two years, gold was up 59% the blue line, but GDX was up 112%, almost doubled over the last two years. I've got to remind you once again, that same characteristic works on the downside. But when you buy GDX, uh, you're basically getting a basket of gold and silver mining companies. Um, another way that you could invest similarly uh, if you're convinced that gold and silver are going to head higher, you could buy GDX or you could buy its junior partner, GDXJ. Now, that's an ETF that invests in the smaller, even riskier gold and silver mining companies. You could also buy individual gold and silver mines um, like Barrick Gold or Coor Mining. Um, and you could buy a mutual fund that invests in the precious metals stocks. Uh, I own USAA's fund. It's a great uh, mutual fund, focuses on buying uh, gold and silver mining companies. It's professionally managed. So to sum it up, I think that all of these options have a place in most investors' portfolios. Bullion bars and bullion coins, ETFs of gold and silver like GLD and silver, and mining shares through one of the many possible investment vehicles, some of which we've, we've considered. What the right mixes for you, something for you to figure out as you can consider your investment objectives, um, your feelings about risk, and as you learn more about the different choices. My newsletter, JSIO, deals with all these issues on a regular basis. Uh, a $1 trial payment gives you a month's worth of weekly editions of JSIO. So if you do want to learn more about investing in gold and silver, uh, and these options, send a dollar to me via PayPal with jstrebler52 at gmail.com as the payee. Next week, I think we'll look at how we know the gold and silver are in bull markets and maybe even look at how high we might expect them to go. Thanks for your attention. Hope to see you next week.